Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you part 23 of what if Naruto was a badass genius. Remember to get this one to 200 like as usual. Share this to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also, go ahead and check out the new episode of what if Naruto is a smart prodigy over on Anime King 2. I also post a new episode of what if Naruto was banished and got a supernatural ability. So go ahead and check out that and enjoy. And later on on this channel I'm going to be posting a new episode of what if Naruto is from the two greatest clans. So stay in tune for that and I hope you guys enjoy. And remember if you're new and this is the first time hearing my voice and you enjoy the videos on both anime king and anime king 2. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking back to all of you. So yeah. Without further ado, what do you say we begin this new episode? Start the intro. I So, the last part we left off, Naruto was attacked by his two unboot friends and also Kakashi. After their finished attack, they invited Naruto to come drink with them as they've been hearing rumors that he's been having something with Yujiro as they want to know what is going on and with that they left. Naruto was then called to the Hokage's tower as Jiraiya was there along as well. As Jiraiya wants to know what Naruto knew about the Akaski. As Naruto said that he heard that the leader of the Akaski is in the rain village. As Jiraiya asked Naruto if he's going there. As Naruto said that he would like some company there. Seeing that people that go into the rain won't come back. He has his ability to get them out of there as quick as possible if anything. As Jiraiya was happy about the prospects of going on a mission with Naruto. Later that night, Skushina was happy to hear that Naruto was going out with friends. As she told him that he could drink, seeing that she didn't want him to be there and not drinking and no one else is, but she told him not to get that drunk. As Naruto went out, as the others were asking him what is going on with him and Yujiro, as Naruto told him nothing is going on, Yujiro then came and sat down. As she started to speak, the way she was saying things, she got Naruto in a rather uncomfortable situation, trying to make the other Anbus find out who is with, not her. As she knows Naruto is going to be angry if they stalk him and find out that he's with Mikato. So she tell him that yes, the two of them are together, as they told her to prove it. So in her junking state, she went over and kissed him and also fondled with his pants a bit, but Naruto stopped her at the last moment. As she then woke up next morning with a throbbing headache, as Naruto was in her room. As Naruto told her the reason why he didn't stop her is because he liked it, as he then crawled on top of her, as she told him she didn't want him to use her like some experiment, but he told her that she's worth more than that to him. As he was going in for a kiss, Kushina came in the room at the same time, catching the both of them off guard. She then talked to the both of them one on one as she talked to Naruto and asked him what does he feel about Yujiro as she didn't want him to be using Yujiro for his plans. As Naruto said that he didn't hate her but he didn't know as Kushina wasn't angry about it, she just wanted to know. She then talked to Yujiro as she told Yujiro that she knew how Naruto was. So if anything she should expect what is to come. After that Naruto was caught in the Hokage's tower. As Nade told him that the Fire Daimyo has a mission for him. As Naruto didn't want to play around with the Fire Daimyo because the man didn't mean anything to him now. Seeing that the man didn't have that much control over the ninja population. But Snade told him that he will do the mission. Naruto told her that he's going to carry as well. As he's going to handle out some details. With that Naruto went back to visit Sasuke as Sasuke was with his mother. As Naruto told him about the details for tomorrow to go into Kiri. As Naruto said, if he comes up to it, he will manipulate the Mitsukagi in any way possible. As Mikoto didn't like that, but Naruto said that it didn't matter, he will do it anyway. So yeah guys, that was basically the last boy left off. You guys can switch across the place and check for yourself. So, what do you say we start this new episode? After leaving the Uchiha compound, Naruto went by Ichiraku Ramen. As Mikoto came beside him and sat down. As she ordered a bowl of ramen, why do you like this place so much? As far as I know, this is the only place you eat from beside home. 
I have never heard someone else say that they saw Nurka eating somewhere else besides from here. I don't like the other places, Nurka said. Besides, this is the only place I can eat in peace without have to worry about the food being poisoned. But things have changed, haven't they? He didn't have to worry about anything despicable by the hands of the villagers. But still, this was the only place he really come to. Well, I can't blame you for what happened in the past, she said. As she got her order, as she looked at the steaming bowl of ramen in front of her, as she went silent for a couple of seconds, then she spoke. Why do I have to be the last to know about your absence from Konoha? As Nurta eyed the woman, why indeed? But did he really owe her that much to treat her like a special case? She was demanded some special treatment and he knew it wasn't because they were just sleeping together. He has known all along that it wasn't just about the pleasure, there was hidden agendas and motives included. It appeared as lust at first. But over time, it grew. It was no more than that. Are we in a relationship, Nurta asked in a curious tone. We are in one, she said, but not one that I would like. I understand it would be difficult if those in our family find out about this. But honestly, you become a big part of my life. And I would say you're my secret man, she said. It has been nice, Nurta said. But how long do you think this will last, Mikato? That is something I don't want to think about, she said. But I've trusted you in my own body. I don't want this to be meaningless. I know it's gonna be difficult, but I at least want to try. As Nurta could see now his mother had yet to say anything about Ujeo. She would have brought that up already, so that was good for now. There were still things that he needed to solve before making any decision. This wasn't just going to affect today or tomorrow, it will affect the rest of his life. Therefore, he had to be careful for what he decided. The next day, at the outskirts of Konoha, isn't this going to cause a problem if it is discovered Sasuke acts? As Nurta sent a clone to guard, the feudal lord's wife. He might not know much about the daimyo, but his mother has told him a few important things, and the man was important. For Nurta to send a mere clone to guard his wife was a mere show of disrespect. What if something happened to her? It was going to just affect the leaf, relationship with the daimyo, but for the future image of Konoha as well. As Nurta looked at Sasuke the raised brow, he expected Sasuke to ask him many things, but not this. Your mother has been teaching you politics. Nurta said as the two sped through the forest, hopping tree after tree as they were going towards Kiri. For my future roles, it will be important that I know basics, said Sasuke. The Uchiha clan isn't dead, we are alive as well, just young, but we will get there one day. Your mother is doing a rather good job, Nurta said. You're obviously learning something. That is good, I don't have to. Caution you when you make reckless decisions. He then paused, at least most of the time he said. What is that supposed to mean, Sasuke said. You will always be Sasuke and I will always be Naruto. There are parts of ourselves we cannot get rid of. I know when you hear something you don't like, there's a certain way you will respond. You might be calmer now, but he's still there. Sasuke looked at the trees. He then turned back to Naruto. Why did you really send a clone to guard that woman? For bandits, she's a good target. Not for rape or sex slave, Nurta said. The worst that could happen is that they sell her in the market for body parts. But that is unlikely. Since she's a daimyo's wife, she's useful alive. She's just going to be used for ransom. And wouldn't it be bad if something like that happened? Sasuke asked. Naturally, Nurta said. But nothing will happen. The clone is arm enough to handle bandits. It will be a different matter if you come across both the shinobis. But we're not expecting something like that. So it should be fine. Aren't you the one who always say we should expect the unexpected? There is nothing to worry about. And in case something happens, there's a backup to make sure the plans are proceed smoothly. So, from what you are doing, you have no longer any interest in the feudal lord. You know he can still have some other talks over the other feudal lord of the other nations. I am no longer interested in him, Nurta said. And if I wanted to, I could have sigh, pay some badness to attack, and the woman be saved by my clone. She would be talking my name in glory. So you'd let her go through all of that just for that, said Sasuke. It would be a good experience for her, Nurta said, and I would end up eliminating insects that are polluting this world. Let us increase our pace, Nurta said. We must hurry to get something to go to sea. And also begin the practice. What would we need to practice on the sea? Chakra control, elemental manipulation, and you can also train your senses, Nurta said. But you don't use water jutsu, Sasuke said. Thinking about in the sea, one would use the water, the vast amount of water to practice water jutsus. He knew Nerd was a wind manipulator, but he also used fire and lightning to some extent. Wind was his greatest, even though he's rarely show off his skills with it. 
he mostly used his sword to put Wind Chucker on it. The wind flowed different in a scene Erica said, and that was the only thing he said as the both of them continued their stroll. The next day, Kiri, Sasuke flashed in front of Naruto, his hand covered in lightning as he thrust it towards her the chest, but Naruto burst into a flock of crows. Sasuke then dispersed his jutsu as he landed down, as he trapped Naruto as he was standing on top of a small rock. Your use of the Sharingan ability to predict people's movements is outstanding. A slower person will not have any chance against you, if you don't let your arrogance get the best of you. As Naruto arms were folded across his chest looking at Sasuke, Hmm, your reflexes keep getting better and better, Sasuke said. Sasuke then burst into electricity. In the blink of an eye, he appeared above Naruto, the Shidori on his right hand. He flashed his jutsu straight towards Naruto, but once again Naruto blinked out of the way. As Sasuke's jutsu smashed into the rock, torn into millions of pieces. Sasuke didn't stop there as he touched the ground, as he poured out lightning, as multiple electric volts came from the ground. Anywhere where Naruto was going to land, he was going to get electrified. A clone appeared beside Naruto in mid air and twisted him and thrust him towards Sasuke like a bullet. Rasengan, Naruto said, as he appeared like he was going to slam the jutsu into Sasuke, as Sasuke activated Susanoo, ribcage, but Naruto poofed away. As Naruto appeared behind Sasuke, extended blade, he said. Sasuke could only see it because of his Sharingan, as a wind blade tore through the back of his Susanoo. As Sasuke had to twist his body, as the blade tear right through the back and burst through the front. Sasuke pumped more chakra and Susanoo increased as a hand smashed down where Naruto was, but Naruto already vanished. Can that jutsu really pierce through anything? Sasuke asked, as it just tear right through Susanoo. And it wasn't the first time Naruto is using this. But it doesn't matter anyway, Sasuke said. At least now I know how it works. Just because you know how it works doesn't mean that you will be able to deal with it, Naruto said. Sasuke shrugged, that was your attack. Now let's see which is faster, he said. As the Susanoo created the bow and arrow. This is enough for today, Naruto said. We have visitors. As he was looking around, he was just looking at the ground. Well, we are in Kiri territory, Sasuke said as he deactivated his Sharingan. The visitors are actually us. They were surrounded by a horde of shinobi, but it was to be expected. They were making noise in the village territory. As they had to take measures to look who was having an unexpected sparring in the back of their yard. As Naruto turns attention behind him, as Ayo appeared, a distance away. As Ayo could tell that they were leaf shinobis by the headband, and also the other one has a Uchiha, and Konoha is the only one that possesses that bloodline. What are Konoha shinobis doing here? He said in a firm tone. As it stands, Kiri had no relationship with the hidden leaf. They would have something, but since the third Hokage refused to help them in the civil war, they hadn't tried anything, and so far they have been focusing on rebuilding their village and making friends with new villages, but not anyone in the five great nations. As Naruto didn't look at Ao, he just looked up at the sky. The fact that we put away our weapons and not leaking any murderer intent, it should be a clue that we meant no harm, and there is no reason for you to use such a tone. Just because you put away your weapons, it's not an invitation to just invite you anywhere or speak to you in a calm manner. I have lived in this world for long enough. Shinobis are not to be trusted, and it's never wrong to be safe. My earlier response was just to get that reaction from you, Naruto said. You see, Sasuke, this is how the shinobi world works. As Ayo just glared at him, who was this brat anyway? The both of them were powerful, he saw it from their match earlier. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, Naruto said. He is Uchiha Sasuke. As you can see from our headbands, we are from the inner leaf. We also have a message from the fifth Okage. We were not aware that Hidden Leaf messengers were coming. We do not know anything about it, Ayo said. Our visit to this land was personal. I've heard some good stories about this village, and that is peaceful. I thought it would be a good place to rest for a while. The fifth then gave me her message to deliver towards the Mizukage when she heard that we were coming to this village. As Naruto reached and pulled out the letter from Tsunade, you can deliver that message to the Mizukage yourself. But be warned, if you try anything stupid, another letter will be sent to the fifth Okage without you, Ayo said. Naruto shook his head but he didn't say anything. He could play the part for now. Besides, he wasn't here to make enemies. But Sasuke spoke. If we were planning on doing something, we wouldn't allow ourselves to be seen so lightly. And first of all, none of you here will be standing right now. And the next moment we would have been standing on the Mizukage's tower. 
The moment he said that, a ton of killing intent was sent towards him. There is no need for that, Sasuke Naruto said. Maybe you are willing to bend, but I can't allow him to threaten us like that. Especially since we told him that we have a message from our Kage. Sasuke then grabbed the letter from Naruto and threw it towards Ayo. This was your proof, but you chose to ignore it and spit your toothless threats. Now hurry up and lead us to your Mizukage. We have been traveling by sea for a long time, and this place is damn cold, Sasuke said. Naruto said nothing, he just looked amused, as he said, Sasuke will always be Sasuke. Moments later, Mizukage office. Mei looked up at the two Konoha Shinobi, walking to her office, led by Eo. She had already received the report that two Konoha Shinobi was sparring. She was a nice person, so she didn't order her man to bring them to her by force. But that would have been done if they refused to cooperate, though. And since they were here in peace, she assumed that they had cooperated. She didn't say anything as she took later from Ao as she went over it. She then turned back to the two fine men. Just because you're two fine young men, I won't have you taken away into the interrogation cells. Your Kage will have to forgive me, but you can never be too careful in the ninja world. Sasuke wanted to snort at that, because he wouldn't allow them to take him in the first place. He will fight back, but he knew that Naruto wouldn't allow the war to happen between them. As Mei noticed the look on Sasuke's face, do you have something to say, she said. No, Sasuke said. She then turned towards Naruto. Since he walked in, he has shown no outward reaction. His facial expression has not changed, not even a twitch. So, what possessed the both of you just to work out, outside of my village, she asked. The sea is rather cold, and we want to keep our body temperatures warm, Naruto said. You should know that the temperature is different here than the fire country. But that wasn't the only idea, Naruto said. I just thought it was best to move our bodies. After a long journey through the sea, Mei stared at him for a long minute, searching for something on his face or his eyes, but she got nothing. As she didn't even have to look at them to tell who was in charge, the blonde was the one who was in charge. Their expressions spoke different things, and just by looking at them, she could tell that they were capable, young man. She then smiled. Mei Terumi. Fifth Mizukagi, she introduced herself. Please sit down. Ayo, you can leave. Ayo nodded as he walked out of the office. Uzumaki Naruto, Jonin of Konoha, Naruto introduced himself. A small smile came on his lips. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Kagesama. The pleasure is all mine. It's not every day I get to meet. Such interesting young man, she said. She then turned to Sasuke. Uchiha Sasuke, Jonin like him, Sasuke said. Mei nodded. Is this letter, she said. Hold not the letter she got from Ayo. The only reason you come here. Depend on your answer, I will either tell you to stay until you recover. Or go back to Konoha and tell her we got her message. No, there are other personal reasons for coming here, Naruto said, in a rather calm tone. May tilted her head to the side, as she was curious what he meant by personal, but she didn't ask. As she then opened the letter, as she read through it, she then looked at Naruto curiously. She then spoke, Kiri has a lot to offer. There are a few places I can recommend, if you're looking for pleasure, she said. As Naruto turned towards Sasuke, Aren't you going to ask Naruto to ask Sasuke? Sasuke just glared at him. I'm not here for that. And since when have you been concerned about pleasure, Sasuke asked. Naruto shook his head. You're telling the Mizuki is our secret, he said. But I should have known you'd have responded like that. Naruto then turned to me. If you can make time to talk to me, I would appreciate it, Mizukage-sama. To be honest, aside from other things, I came here because I wanted to talk to you. How long do you intend to stay, she asked. A couple of days, give or take, Nerga said. Tomorrow afternoon, for now, you should go around to see the village. We will talk then, she said. A will be at your aid if you need anything. For now, I have a lot of work to do. They were being dismissed just like that. Nerga smiled. Maybe you'll get along with this woman. Time skip. Snade looked at the letter that she just got from. The sand. As things have just shifted a lot now. The Akasuke attacked the sand and they managed to take Gaur away from the village. This only means that they were moving their agenda forward now. They were surely going to act again, to think that only two of them can get into a hidden village and take away the leader. Gaur might be young but he was still a Kage and the one-tailed Jinjulki beast. Shikaku didn't walk in the office. Is there something wrong? Hokage-sama, he asked. He could assume that there was something wrong. It wasn't often that Sinale summoned his presence. With such a firm manner, the Akaske have started the move, she said. They attacked the sand and they got Gara. That is unsettling, said Chikaku. But now we can say it without a doubt, the organization is after the Biju. All Jinjulkis will be targeted, and we can use the sand case to prove that the threat is real. 
It was hard to convince other villages of the threat that the Akaski posed when you had no proof about the Akaski, but now they do. I have sent a team led by Kakashi to handle the situation. The success depends on them. But I picked the strongest team I could. The San is our ally, and Gara has been honest in dealing with us. If possible, I want to save him and also stop the Akaski from doing what they want to do. Shikaku then got a thoughtful look. Unfortunately, right now, Sasuke and Naruto are nowhere in the village. Granted, we have not seen all of their abilities. We know that they are capable shinobis and would be well suited for this mission. Snadden nodded. I won't disagree with that. But we must not always depend on them. We must allow the others to grow and give them opportunity to prove themselves. My relationship with Naruto is improving, but there is no telling what he will do next if things turn upside down. Shikaku wanted to tell her that it would be something she would not like, but he kept his thoughts to himself. Let us hope that we are able to handle the Akaski issue quickly before they make more movements. I called you here because we need to come up with a strategy on how to handle them. I have been trying to get a hold of Jiraiya, but for now, I have no success, she said. Since he left the village, I haven't heard anything from him. I think after what happened in the sand, he will come back after learning of it. I will send a message to both Kumo and the stone. Kusa will also get one since he also possesses a Jinjulke. Meanwhile, at the Senju compound, Kushina was looking around as there was a lot of things to do to make this their main house. She was surprised when Mikoto walked in. Well, she was her friend but that wasn't a surprising thing. After so much that Nerd has been doing here and setting up all shops and all that, how could she just walk in that freely? I thought everything was done, said Mikoto as she sat at the table. I want everything to be perfect, said Kushina. But it is really done. We just need to set up barriers in the compound and around this house once Nerta has the time. We won't move until Nerta is satisfied with the security. Perhaps I will hire you to do some barriers for my compound as well. It's a bit problematic when someone can go and come as they feel, Mikoto said the smile. Wait, watch what she's saying. If she does that, wouldn't that mean there will be a problem with her and Naruto? Sasuke would surely want to know everything, and Naruto wouldn't be able to sneak in at night time. Her son will also know that she had a tendency of leaving in the middle of the night for somewhere that he doesn't know, and if he came aware of that, he will definitely ask a lot of questions. Maybe even follow her to know where she went at night. That would be a serious problem. You should, Kushina said. How have you been though? We haven't had time together in the past weeks. We're always here and there and you're always with your clan. Kushina didn't believe that though. There was something else that was stopping them from getting together, but she just couldn't put her finger on it. A lot has been happening in the past weeks, Mikato said. She was going to tell the woman that it was difficult facing her when she was sleeping with her son. But I've been well, you seem fine yourself, Mikato said. You chill not with you today? With Nurtra away, I thought she would be behind you like your shadow. Kushina smiled. That is something of the past, she said. It reminds me of Naruto. But these days he can go around without returning back to me at blinding speed. I'm happy that he's growing. Growth is important. I think he's able to leave now because he knows that you're safe back in the village. But then, he didn't want to leave you alone. Kushina nodded. Yeah, things have changed, huh? I always believe they will change though. I am happy that my son has changed as well. I don't suppose you know why he went to Kiri, do you? He isn't forthcoming in these kind of things, said Mikato. Hmm? I didn't think you were interested, said Kushina. The raised eyebrow. But I get since it involves your son. You have to be, she said. I don't bother myself with the main details, and he doesn't bother telling me them. But he said the main objective was to meet the Mizukagi a friend, and possibly a friend of Konoha. So that was what he meant by making things personal with the Mizukagi. Mikato thought. I see, Mikato said. He's making friends, huh? Kushina smiled, not the kind of friends you would want for your child, but... Speaking of friends, Naruto is gonna make Yujiro a special friend. A special friend, Mikato said, surprised. How sure are you? Not a doubt, said Kushina with a smile. Yujiro is mature and can keep up with Naruto. I have known her, and I am sure things would work well. We are already a family, and I will be happy to start thinking about having grandchildren. I still think he is too young for that though. Yes, he's too young, she said to herself. You seem happy about this, Mikato said, with a thin smile. Nurta never mentioned this to me the last time we spoke. How long have you known about this? I caught them in the act. I think something has been happening for a while now. Kushina didn't change the subject. How is your son doing? Everything that is Sasuke, said Mikato as she stood up. She was a little disappointed that Kushina cut it short about Yujiro, but she could not push things. She didn't want to raise any questions that would put her in a difficult situation. 
If Naruto was keeping things hidden with Yujiro, that meant it was something rather serious. And with the way Yujiro looked at her, she knew that something was up with them. For the moment, she thought of putting that aside. Because Naruto might be doing this keep their relationship a secret. But why did he hide his relationship with him and Yujiro though? You leaving already? Asked Kushina. I was just here to check on you, Mikoto said that smile. For now, I must head back to the compound, she said. Back at Kiri, Mei was sitting at her decks with lunch prepared on her decks. She could not go out to have lunch. There was a lot of work to do. She needed to keep Kiri in check. After the civil war, things were really bad and she needed to build it back up from the bottom. Naruto was sitting across from her as he was eating quietly. He wasn't saying anything to her and he wasn't giving her any glances. He may be young, but he was still a male. But it doesn't look like he had any of those urges. He wasn't even checking her out. But from the way he treated things and from the way he walked, he almost act noble. I thought you'd be with Sasuke when you came here, Mei said. I Naruto carefully. Naruto looked up from his plate and stared at her for a few seconds. Do you play Shogi? Mizukage Sama Naruto said, not answering the question, or perhaps even cards. Cards are especially good exercises in hiding your poker face from someone, he said. Mei was slightly surprised by the question, but she didn't show it. No. I have never played. I have never even got the chance to play because of my work. Before I became Mizukage, I was leading the rebels against a bloodthirsty Yagar who threatened to destroy this village, she said. Naruto nodded. Kiri was once famous for his bloodlines, and not to mention the Seven Swordsmen. I came across one of them when I was Jenin. Sabuza was his name, and not to mention he had a young bloodline wheeler with him. I believe from the Yukimaru clan. Unfortunately, they all died. I did manage to get the sword from Zabuza though. Humans have these things about reclaiming past glorious. It is necessary, not a bad thing though. And I suppose you brought the blade of a sign of what? May asks. Naruto shook his head, I brought it here because it was a waste, leaving it beside a dead man. He then went back to May's earlier question. Sasuke is busy looking around the village. I sometimes treat him as a child and not include him in certain conversations. It isn't fear, but I can't help myself, he said. Does he know you treat him like that, May asks. Of course, he's not stupid, Nerta said. He was hailed as a genius in our academy class, and you, she asks. I'm not a genius in the academy. I was never interested in becoming the best. The academy was just a waste of time to me. It taught me nothing I didn't already know. What I am is a dedicated and passionate person to my course. May nodded. She was going to pass any judgment on him. The blonde was surely interesting though, from the letter she received from Snally that made her even more curious. What did you want to talk about, she asked. I'm curious, Nerta said. What did the Hokage say to you about the letter? You only spent a few seconds on it, so I assume that there is just a handful of words. May tilted her head to the side. What if I only read the first words that said do not read in Nerta's presence and then I closed it? Nerta smiled, that is a compelling argument. And it would certainly make you curious, wouldn't it? May nodded. Yes, I am already curious, she said. Since you appear before me, you have been curious to me. Of course, it could all be an act. We are taught to never trust anything in this world, and to be deceitful when we need something, she said. People can easily turn around and betray you. A rather practical world we live in, Nerta said. Hmm, but it's a different story when it comes to civilian life. They do not live in the same world as we do. Our worlds are different from theirs. I guess you're not going to answer my question. Is it okay if I just call you Mei San? He asked. Mei is just fine, she said. Mei it is, then Nerta said. I don't make a lot of friends in my life, but when I do, the people have to possess a certain quality that makes them human. Most people are just living, but their actions don't make them human. I dislike such people. I heard that you're a woman of strong morals and want nothing but peace for your people. I guess what you have seen in this land so far make your desire strong. I cannot say I've seen as much as you have, but I've seen a couple of things. What I have seen had made me wish to see this world with order and justice. Kages are disconnected from each other. Everyone is minding their own business, leaving gaps in the world. These gaps give the corrupted seed to have chance to grow and plant all around the elemental nations. The seeds will then destabilize things, pulling everything towards it. My view for such seeds to be removed, there must be a connection to the elemental nations and that work of communication needs to be established for the elemental nations to connect. Mei was silent for a minute. And why do you desire that, she asked. Can you keep a secret, Nerta said. Mei nodded. 
It is because if this world break out in the war, a darker side of me will break out with just one purpose. As me could tell, she could tell that he was holding back something rather dark but she just couldn't tell what it is. But she knew that he only wanted this for himself or perhaps to protect someone precious to him. And what purpose is that she adds? With what I have said, you should have an answer he said. Hmm, do you resent war that much? The wars are nothing that I don't dislike himself Nerta said. The reason is behind the wars. There are some petty conflicts that could have been dissolved easily without bloodshed. Over using weapons to solve matters. I prefer talking and using my head he said. But if a war was to break loose, he would allow the Kayubi some freedom, get rid of most of the problem in the elemental nations. But he didn't understand what kind of trouble that would bring for him and his mother. When his name was called, people would call him by the demon or the monster and he didn't want that. People would want him to suffer and naturally all of that led back to his mother. She would be forced to remain in the leaf or any place they have chosen to live after that. And that was something he didn't want for her to constantly be watching her back. He wanted her to be free and happy just as she wished for him. Hmm, for a young man you surely are interesting she said. But what you want here is a corruption. The only thing you want is to join the dots together. But I won't allow myself to be manipulated by you in anything I don't want to do. What gives you the impression that I'm after manipulation, Nerta said. If my purpose was that, I would have come to you in a different way. Some relationships are kept strong by a truth and a bond. That may be true, but people who smooth talk are oftenly snakes that lure their prey into a trap. This thing could work for me, but I will discuss it with your Fifo Kagi. You started it, but I will end it with your leader. She can come here anytime she pleases. Of course, you can come with her if you like. That is fine with me, Nerta said. I do hope that when you come back here, we'll have some fruitful conversation. I am still going to be here for two days at least. I have found this environment to be refreshing. May smile, please enjoy your stay. But I do hope to have one more conversation before you leave. At Konoha, Yujiro found herself pressed against the wall with a very stern Mikoto looking down at her as she was walking looking for some furniture for the Senju compound. Mikoto had came out and requested to speak to her. Without even a response, she dragged her way into an alley. She has no doubt that it has to do something with Naruto. Kushina must have talked to her about it. But she anticipated this. The woman was possessive of Naruto. She was literally waiting for him to grow up so she could make him a man. So she could understand she didn't want to share him with anyone. Yujiro smiled at the woman. Mikato said, This is a lovely surprise. Mikato narrowed her eyes dangerously. What are you playing at, Yujiro? I know that you're aware about Naruto and me. You have known for quite some time now, but I always thought that Naruto had recovered. Is this something to do with getting a girl to hide my relationship with him? That was something that they discussed, but she made it clear that she had to approve the person first. Naruto didn't have to go behind her back with it, and she didn't want you jail. This woman was important to Kushina as well, and they were very close already. And Naruto would not do anything to endanger that relationship with you jail and his mother, and that made her scared a bit. I am not playing at anything Yujiro said. Do you really think that Naruto would do that to me? She was his trusted mother's protector. If he do anything bad to her, he would have to think about another person to find and to protect his mother always to be there for her. He was okay now because if something happened, she could protect his mother or call him back if she couldn't handle it. Mikoto stepped away and calmed herself. It appears this thing between the both of you is true. But I wonder why he's keeping that secret from me. He didn't mention anything that when we last spoke, she said to herself, more than you, Jeyo. How serious are you, she said. Well, his mother said that unless he think of marrying me, he cannot start a relationship. Mikoto frowned here in that if that happened, she would be the side woman. She would be with him, on the side, when she was the one who turned him into a man before this woman ever came along. And that left a bitter taste in her mouth. She could not think of getting married to Naruto, Kushina would not allow that, and it would not be good for her clan. But if Naruto married Yujiro, there was a chance that he would discard her like that. He would be happy because his mother would be happy that he's with Yujiro and he wouldn't do anything to spoil that up and that means leaving her out in the cold. Well given recent developments in her body, she didn't have to worry. She just frowned at the thought of using it to keep Naruto by her side. She then turned towards Yujiro, so you're saying that you're not in a relationship with him and there's a chance it might not even start. Well, at least that is good news, she said. 
As Mikoto thought, maybe if she told him what is going on, maybe he would only focus on her. I wouldn't put my hope in something like that, Yujiro said. You should know better. Naruto doesn't make moves on impulsive. If he's going to do something, he will do it. And I'm not just going to allow him to walk away after everything. What is that supposed to mean? Asked Mikato. I am interested, Yujiro said, but she didn't add Naruto's name. Unlike you, I don't have to hide my relationship with him. I can give him a family that his mother desire for him. Yujiro felt that she was stepping out of line, but she knew she had to say it. She didn't see a future between Naruto and Mikato. They were not going to go anywhere, and Naruto needed someone that would support him and be there for him. And if his mother find out about this, this would just cause Naruto and her a problem as well, because his mother would be angry at Mikato and Naruto as well. Yuji was going to tell her to end things with Naruto. That was something she had to think for herself. Mikato smiled a bitter smile. I only wanted to confirm. Have a good day, Yujiro. Maybe she shouldn't have said all of that. As Mikato looked sad, maybe she didn't want sex alone. She wanted something more with Naruto. As she realized what was she going to do about this? And how was she going to interact with the woman the next time they meet? Mikato, Yujiro said. As Mikato stopped, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Mikato shook her head, you're correct. I won't get married to Naruto, his mother won't allow it. But my relationship with him won't remain a secret for too long. And I can give him a family. Yujiro narrowed her eyes. What is that supposed to mean, she asked. Mikato smiled. I'm just stating the reality, she said as she walked off. Later that day, I thought you were going to take your sweet time to get back. Snadis at Zeraya appeared through the window. There was matters that need to be dealt with and he was needed. And Mr. Sweet Face Zeraya said a grin. You know I can't be away from you too long, Haim. Snadis shook her head. Zeraya love was something for her that she always ignored. She has known for a long time, but nothing was going to come out of it. He was old enough to know that, but yet he has continued to love her. Did it really have to come to that point? Or just didn't she want to be involved with anyone? She shook her head, this was something she didn't need to think about. Be serious pervert, she said. You should know that the Akaski is already on the move and they managed to get the one tails. Jerry got serious, I am aware of that, he said. We should step up in our efforts to contact the other Akagis. I will head to the stone. I don't think it would be safe for someone like Naruto to go to that village. They are bound to be frictions and you don't want him to open his mouth there if they talk to him in a rather rude tone. And since he know that they hold some resentment towards him, he would not hold back. It would be better to send to Kumo. The right guy can be dismissive, but it would be helpful that Naruto can get to him and make him listen. If not, I hope he has better security to protect his Zinjulke. At the same time, we cannot allow Naruto to move freely because if they see a chance, they will take it. Snally nodded. Naruto isn't in the village at the moment. He went to Kiro with Sasuke. I'm sure the two of them can manage. I will summon Sai and get him to send a message to Naruto about his newest mission. She then paused. When will you depart? She asked. Early morning, he said. I need to rest a bit in the hot spring before going on another journey. You mean you have to peep on the woman at Konoha first, she said, with an angry tone. Time skip. Two days later, Naruto and Sasuke were dashing towards Konoha. When Naruto stopped, he held out his right hand and a bird came on it. As he read the small scroll for a minute, as he then nodded, seeing that there was no mess for replay, the bird burst into black ink. What was that about, Sasuke asked. A change of plans, Naruto said, the Akasuke attacked the sand and managed to get their hands on the first biju. I have to go to Kumo and warn the Raikage about it. It is most likely they will go to Kumo next. You can return to Konoha, I will deal with this alone. The message said that Snadi wanted Sasuke to go with him for safe measures, but Naruto was going to follow that suggestion. He didn't need Sasuke to have his back to know that he was safe. Sure, the Uchiha was strong, but he could do without him. Besides, this time alone without him was more than enough. He didn't need more time with him. You don't sound surprised that he managed to attack and take Gaara, Sasuke said. Why would I be surprised, Naruto said. He knew that they were going to attack the Jinjulke, and he couldn't understand what they would do with it. He needed Gaara as a sacrifice. As long as the Kazekage was still alive though, nothing else was going to be a problem. The Bijui house wasn't enough to cause anything worry. Gara is still alive, there shouldn't be a problem, Naruto said. I will see you back at Konoha. I'm coming with, Sasuke said as he jumped on the same tree branch as Naruto. No, you're not, Naruto said. I am going with you whether you like it or not, Sasuke said. Naruto turned towards Sasuke with a cold expression on his face. Sasuke, 
It has become quite clear to me that your power is starting to get to your head. I have praised you of your growth, but you're still an arrogant child. Do not think because you have the Mongetio, you. I still cannot smack you into the ground. Do not misunderstand my tolerance as a sign of fear. I told your brother I would kill him if he crossed the line. Do you think I will fear you, a mere Uchiha brat that I trained? Sasuke glared. He didn't fear the cold tone that Naruto was using, but he didn't like it though. They were of the same age and he was sure that Naruto couldn't do what he used to do when they were young. He had become strong, but yet still Naruto has never fight him with the serious intent to break him. And through all of their battles, he has never used the Kaiyu's power, not even once. But it didn't matter. He has the Mongetu, he has become stronger. Maybe not, but I would like to see you attempt that, Sasuke said. In an instant, Naruto left foot was aiming towards Sasuke's head. Sasuke leaped back on a branch. The moment he did, the branch sliced into two as Sasuke fell to the ground. Go home, Sasuke, Naruto said. At the sand, Gara was sitting behind his decks. He has returned from being captured by the Akasuke. No, that was inaccurate. He was rescued. The only reason he was here it was because of the sacrifice that was made. Are you okay, Gara? Tamar said. As her brother met death when he was captured. But she wanted to know that Baki, all of them were here for him. He has a tendency of keeping things to himself. Gara's eyes went towards his sister. How is Conkro doing? He asks. He's fine. Soccer antidote has worked, but he isn't 100% yet. He should be up and running in a few days, Tamar said. I shall also leave for Kanoha tomorrow. There are still things we must finalize in our diplomatic talks. Gara nodded. He had to thank Konoha efforts for his rescue, although it was Lady Chio who sacrificed her life to give him back his life. He couldn't take anything for granted. They helped a lot as well. The Leaf has sent it best to try and rescue him and his brother. He told if it was not for Sakura, his brother would be dead by now. And he had to thank Snadi for that. You will express my gratitude to Konoha, Gara said. Tamari nodded. Anything to Naruto? Why he wasn't even on the rescue team? She was really questioning the motive of the blonde. Ever since the invasion, he has become so indifferent towards them. He wasn't even on the team to help Gara. He didn't even want to talk to them anymore. He was not even talking to her. He let Shikamar do that on his behalf. Well, she was talking to him when she get to Konoha. She was always a guest when she go there anywhere. Kushina, see her as a daughter. He was not in Konoha when they received the message. From what Kakashi said, he went to Kiri with Sasuke. But if you do find him, tell him that I want to speak to him, Gara said. But guys, it'll be in this episode right here. If you want to see the next part of this area, know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn that bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And stay in tune for what if. Naruto's from the two greatest clans. But for now, I'm out of here, guys. See you guys soon. Peace.